Oh, we're YouTube live on YouTube. I'm here. Now, tell. Oh, I always, hello, now you used to be with Move On. You have a new organization. Tell people about it. We have a very new seven and a half year old organization. No, cut it out. It's called the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, boldprogressives.org. We have a million members. A lot of TYT listeners and viewers are our members, and vice versa. And now, so. And, and I got arrested with Jenk Uger at, oh, Demo right. at Democracy Spring, that's very, right. very we happily and proudly. Yeah. And so now, what do you? What is the Progressive Change message that you want to get out? Look, there's, there's a lot of things that can potentially distract us at this convention. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Tim Kaine, a lot of this stuff is symbolic and important. The big story for progressives at this convention is that the center of gravity has shifted in the Democratic Party and there's now general unity around a bold progressive agenda. We're going to hear many of the same ideas and themes coming from Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Hillary Clinton at this convention, and that is a sign of progress and you know, success after years of hard work. So you're saying there's unity here? I'm saying there's general unity, certainly directional unity. Again, there's a shifting center of gravity. Now that's not to say our work is ever over, and I think it's always important to keep moving the window of possibility. You know, when, when the main proposal on the table is a $9 minimum wage, we fought for 10 and 12, and now 15 is mainstream, right? Um, you know, it's great that Democrats are now coalescing around the, uh, around the public option. Let's go a little bigger, right? But, so I'm not saying we're done and there's unity, but I'm saying there is not a Joe Lieberman contingent in, in full force. There is not, you know, basically there's going to be uh, a lot of people talking about debt-free college, expanding social security, the public option, breaking up too big to fail banks. And that's because of a lot of hard work of progressives to get us to this point. But Hillary, I just saw her being uh, talking with Charlie Rose, and she vehemently said that Bernie did not pull her to the left. So part of how we talk about it is he, he incentivized her to keep the volume high on progressive issues, right? But for the primary, she would not have talked as much about breaking up too big to fail banks, expanding social security, debt-free college, and now the public option. Um, whether she did it because she's always had those positions, whether she did it because a smart pragmatist in the middle of an economic populist tide will take economic populist positions, regardless, she kept the volume high because Bernie Sanders and others were incentivizing her to do so. So I think this, this, this movement played a really valuable role. And, you know, but for Bernie Sanders and this active primary, um, you know, most reporters and pundits would not be as attuned to the ideas of debt-free college and expanding Social Security as they are now. That's definite. That's a definite. But, as, uh, you know, as far as Hillary, she would, <laughs> I think she would deny everything you just said. But, uh, well, which part? No, that, that, that she adopted a progressive agenda because of the primary, because of anything that uh, Bernie did or your organization or anybody. I think she denies that. Well, again, I, I'm not... Uh, what I didn't just say is that he forced her to take a bunch of positions. That's possible. But we could have had a Democratic primer, a coronation, happening in silence while Republicans had the entire stage to themselves for the last year. Instead, we were projecting a Democratic message with two candidates competing to sound bolder on Wall Street reform, expanding Social Security, debt-free college. I mean, she at one point actually claimed that her Wall Street reform plan was bolder than Bernie Sanders. You, you can disagree with that, and that's fine, but the fact that she wants to go there is a function of the fact that there was an active primary, right? She was competing to tell voters, no, I'm the pro-Wall Street reform candidate. Great. Thank you, Bernie Sanders, for ensuring that we had an active discussion on our side, and that's what voters were getting. So would you, and I'll let you go after this, would you agree then with Ralph Nader, when he's saying that what really is happening with Bernie's endorsement is in a sense, he's setting her up to betray the progressives so then he could then use that to amplify his movement later? Please, in this convention hall, do not say the words Ralph Nader. Um, I love too Ralph soon, Nader. I know, I, I love his history, too soon. Too soon, Give him, I think 20 years will be nice. Um, no, I, I think there will always be the need to keep the pressure on and quote, make her do it when she gets in there. But part of what we're incentivizing, like, let's put it this way. If she went through this campaign and dropped all these progressive ideas after the primary, they were languishing as bullet points on her website as she went and talked about kind of fluff generalisms, we'd be in big trouble. The fact that she thinks it's a smart general election strategy to, in almost every speech, talk about debt-free college, in many speeches talk about expanding Social Security and Wall Street reform, and increasingly the public option, which came back out of nowhere, right? That, that, it's important that she sees that as you know, part of her self-identity and how she got elected. And that gives us a leg up when we get into 2017, but then we're going to have to keep the pressure on to make sure that what happens in the first 100 days is not the TPP, is not you know, 
austerity or budget balancing stuff, but instead is debt-free college, expand social security, Wall Street reform. You know, when I talk to you, I actually start feeling good and yeah. I just know, but the inner cynic knows that I shouldn't let myself feel, because something's going to come and smash me soon, you know, uh, from the Democrats, I mean, you know. I mean, how do, uh, uh, I, you, you would like to think, so you think that the Democrats are moving in the right direction? Yeah, I don't think saying that they're moving in the right direction and saying that we still have a lot of work to do so in, right is here, intellectually inconsistent. What does that say? No, what does this say? Warren Wing. <laughs> Warren Wing. <laughs> No, they're, right. they're sponsoring the right? yeah, no, I, Comcast. They're pro TPP. There are, there's only six companies that own, own all the media in the United States. They're one of them. And actually, can I please get a TYT network lanyard? I'd, I'd actually feel really good about that. Okay. Can, I, can I get one? Okay, why, why don't we end it there? I feel much better about having that around my neck. Okay. Um, no, you're right. You know, again, we have we will always have we'll always have less money than them, and it will always be a fight to get things actually across the finish line. But two years ago, who would have predicted? that Hillary Clinton would be campaigning on breaking up too big to fail banks, expanding Social Security, not cutting it, debt free college, and again, the public option. You know, we've, we can take some degree of um, a victory lap for moving the ball in our direction and being kind of uh, you know, the cause and in the middle of an economic populist tide, and we have more work to do. Almost eight years ago, they started ProgressiveChange.org, ladies and gentlemen, and we are very- Progressive.org. Is it bold? I can't. It does we, have, we, have, we have a few brands. We have the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. Some call us the so there is. So there is a- But BoldProgressive.org happens to be our website, yes. So I keep, there's too many bolds and progressive things interchanging. But anyway, thanks for talking with us. Yeah, I, you always make me feel better about being a progressive, so thanks for that. Can we, can we take a selfie on camera? Let's do it. Let's do it. We're gonna take one on camera.